Hi there, and welcome to the Grimdark Grotto. Today, we'll be having an introductory look into the lore and painting tutorial for the Hellforged Skull Hurlers of Corn, the Skull Cannon. I have currently based the Skull Cannon with a Wraithbone White spray from Citadel, um, and it's a particularly good base to bring out um, vibrant colours. I'm also going to be basing it with Warplock Bronze. Just thin out my base paint a little bit with some water to smooth it out a bit so we can get into the deeper recesses of the model. The Skull Cannon, it's not necessarily a vehicle in of itself, it's more like, it kind of is, it's more like a possessed motorbike. These deep, these two little dudes over, look, apparently um, overlook its construction as it's built from like brass and black iron and what have you. And they kind of like force some crazy demon into it. And it drives itself, they're basically kind of wrangling it into uh, the direction in battle. And this thing is basically looking just to run people over. So now that our base coat has dried, I am going to start on some of the finer details as well as the panelling. For the finer details, I'll be using Citadel's Brass Scorpion for the trim, and I will be using um, Abaddon Black for the panelling. So they don't have much control over it, it's all well, steering. Not particularly, no. The kind of similar breed of like creatures if you like because it says in um, a lot of the world building and the law even though we have like models to represent these guys they can kind of take any form of like relative size so they can appear to be anything they can be um, red horn devils just like they appear like quite classically in the um, models right but also could appear to be like blood soaked madmen and what have you it depends on who's looking at them at the moment in time is what shape that they take this thing, however, is solid, but the thing that's inside of it, it's this stretched out and kind of contorted spirit. It's kind of just railing against uh, the control of these two. So it changes form, depending on who's looking at it. Do they have, like, do, do we know what they really look like, or just... Technically, no. They look like everything and nothing at the same time. They are like, if a dream entered reality. So, wow. yeah. Then they're not... Yeah, they're actually more metaphorical than physical things. Right. Like if you shoot them, you're not so much as damaging their body as like disrupting their ability to kind of project themselves into reality. So they can heal. Uh, kind of. You can also shoot straight through them and nothing will happen. Or you could shoot through them and your head might explode. It's that they they they're, they're kind of messing with reality as they enter it. Right. Like, if they entered on a field, like just these two guys, nothing would probably grow in that field forever. Or it might take on some kind of strange, almost poetical or biblical type curse where right. the corn would bleed with real blood and yeah, it can be like damaged by it. And, it. and it depends on kind of people's belief who are around them at the time. Like if a demon were to bite you, it could be venomous, but it's only as venomous as you believe it to be. Right. So if you believe it won't cause you any harm, then it won't. If you believe that these guys don't cause you any harm, then they won't. Yeah. It's a hell of a thing to believe, so. But when that thing's running towards you, yeah. it's, yeah, it's Typically you believe you're gonna get mown down by it, and then you do, because yeah. you believed in it. Yeah. So to scale against like a six foot like human, how big would this thing be? Um, so, I would say probably one of these little chaps is maybe around about nine feet tall. Wow. So this is, it's it's a big thing. This is about like the same size like an articulated uh, truck or lorry. I've finished the trim, okay. um, I believe for now. And I am blocking in uh, many of the arm plates with black. And I always thin your paints down a little bit. And for every drop of paint, maybe a brush full of water keep it smooth and not to cake on too thickly because then you can build on top of this like all like the little details that you see this is basically going to be its shadow yeah obviously with the white this is way more like vibrant a color than normally be but you need to like really get in 
all these small gaps that you might be able to see within the wheel arches and what have you. So just be mindful of that. You don't need to get absolutely everything, because if you can't see it while it's on board or while it's mounted, it doesn't matter. Not too big of a deal. But obviously, if you want to get it neat, you want to get every little bit that you can see. And it's got some fresh water as we're going to be working on some lighter colours for the flesh. We'll be using some pink horror um, from Citadel. Also one thing I like about the Warhammer books that you can purchase and stuff. It gives you an example of all the different faction colours schemes. But it gives you an example of like customised colour schemes for like different uh, looks and aesthetics if you like. And it does the same even with demons, as demons don't really have a true faction other than what god birthed them, if you like. Um, they still provide like a lot of like different schemes and stuff. Grim Dark is basically a phrase for the setting itself. So everything in the 41st millennium kind of sucks to a certain degree. Long story short, humanity became this amazing dominant force of like wholeness and looking out for each other and stuff and then some terrible crap happened and mankind's just been reverting backwards and now even though the year is 40,000 and humans are a space uh, faring species it's very industrialized the main resource that mankind has is warm bodies the way that they deal with wars is they just suit everyone up with the barest of essentials and weapons and armour and just keep on throwing men and women at the problem until it stops. It's advised in the soldier's handbook in the Imperium is that when you are about to die you should shield your gun and your armour around your body like this so that someone else can take them off and use them again. Now that the majority pink is out the way I might put in the skulls. I'll be using citadels Screaming Skull, very aptly named. It's a great cream colour for any bones and kind of horns and teeth that you might have on particular Chaos models. It's quite a useful paint to have regardless. We're going to be getting the skulls in these tiny little recesses you can see inside of the war machine here. Also, gussy up the name Ploughing Horn as well. Again, have it watered down so it doesn't cake on and just apply two thin layers. There's a demonic weapon it fires the skulls of the damned as its ammunition. The way I like to imagine this is they would start with a stockpile of skulls that these two guys have claimed for themselves and as they run people over it kind of dismembers them, sucks in the skulls and adds to the vehicle as it fires them out the back from the back wheel. So some kind of like, it's quite green, it's like a green efficient vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> really, these guys just want to get rid of the carbon footprint. No. <laughs> Environmental friendly demons that commit genocide and horrible acts of carnage. Yeah. I'll now be using um, Cadian Flesh Tone, another one by Citadel, um, to do the lighter areas of the flesh. And this will give the Fleshy bits, a little bit of depth. And what I'm doing here is I'm just getting a little bit of paint on my brush, just wiping it away, getting it within the bristles. So there's a little bit left, I'm just lightly catching the surface. A technique called dry brushing, which a great many better artists could give you some better tips but it's a very basic but a very useful skill to have um, he used to be 70 but I believe he's now 80 they're incredibly expensive products but I must admit from purchasing other models from different companies I think personally the guys at Game Workshop make some of the best cut molds that you can really buy right So it takes a long time to build them, and there's the, it's a lot of fun doing that as well. Like the craft itself, it's just, I, I love building them. A start buying collection um, would give you 10 of these little figures, 
um, one of these guys who could also be um, like a captain who it's basically something called the blood throne where instead of the gun there's a guy um, on top of a large throne kind of your commander um, and there are three of these guys on these kind of like um, war picks um, and that's around about 50 pounds for that so you can get a decent amount out of it there are some other start collecting the start collecting box at the moment as of January 2021 the Chaos Marine start collecting box is excellent it's 55 pounds and you get a lot with it I'm just gonna balance the pain on these blood letters before we move on to them now we're gonna move on to the blood letters and I will be using Mephiston Red as my base we are basing these guys in full here, so I'm just going to slap it onto them. I like use Mephiston for painting the blood letters, and it's a very vibrant red. It's corn red, given the name is very good, it is quite dark for these smaller guys where highlights are going to be wanted. Now we're waiting for those to dry. I'm going to use some lead belcher base on some of the metal and the miscellaneous pieces and pipes that we have on the model. Not to be too heavy with it, just to pick up on some of the machinery. So we like to leave some of that brass on the wheels. Sometimes it helps, if your water is sufficiently thin, you've gathered it in one spot where you don't want it to set, just give it a little blow, it'll help spread it around in uh, the crevices. Hopefully get it away from there, pooling too much in one place. look if you can dry brush some like metal over metal so some silver over the brass makes it look a little bit kind of worn the metal's tarnished now that the flesh area is nice and dry I'm going to add on a shade the shade I'll be using is Reichland uh, flesh shade with the Citadel paint a shade or a wash is a brilliant way to add extra depth onto your model so after your paint has dried and given that it's sufficiently enough light enough that this uh, extra color will show this should seep into some of the deeper areas create a new texture now regular flesh shade is quite close to the colors that i'm already using so i don't really feel like i need to water this wash down I am currently just painting in the teeth of these little devils here. Just that little um, detail goes a long way. It's a bit fiddly. At first it doesn't look amazing, but after you've got the paint on it dries and you add a wash, it'll be quite effective. And since these blood letters always bear their teeth, it's a good thing to have on each. And we'll just go over some of the bits that we've missed and the bits we've painted over as we start a touch up and finish off the bike. Did before, add a little bit of frightening flesh shade around the teeth, 
the mouth line. If you want to get into Warhammer, my main advice is if you go in the shop and it, you buy yourself um, a start collector's kit, because they're typically way cheaper than buying individually, pick the thing that you think's the coolest. Pick the things that you like the colours of the most and stuff, and then kind of go from there. Um, worry about like faction rules and stories, kind of. I mean, if you want to be into that straight away, then by all means go and do that first. But if you want to collect the miniatures, just pick something that you can look at and really engage with. Yeah, That's the best advice I could give to anybody. I really used to like this faction called Tyranids that were like this um, kind of this monstrous bug alien race that was basically this kind of like invasion force. Because I liked all the monstrous stuff in it, but when I came back to collect again years later and I saw um, some of the Chaos Marines, I thought they just looked way too cool to pass up, so... They do. Started collecting Chaos Marines and Demons. And I absolutely love them. Now I'm going to add the shade for the Blood Letters using Agrax Urshed. Do put plenty on, but don't put too much that it would completely dominate the miniature. I was just using this to highlight or oh, dark light some deeper set areas. Use some abandoned black just to tidy up the body of the tank. A wash is basically a very thin down paint and you can use these to build up um, kind of textures in the recesses of your models. So as you can see, I'm trying to get a good zoom in, on the fleshy parts I've got um, some, well, shading and um, some of the recesses and the way that the wash works is as you paint over it, it will go thin and opaque on the surface level so it won't ruin your colours but in the deeper recesses it'll um, settle and add shadow it can also help to blend um, two different colours together as well so it's good for like a little third party for that just using a little bit of Monfang Brown for the leather the sword wraps there's a light touch of Screamer Pink paint the tongues on these happy little faces A bit of black. Now, finish off with this little shade of some Nullin Oil. Nullin Oil is a brilliant shade to use on things that are meant to be like metal, like on chains and metal paneling and what have you. It creates a very, well, as the name suggests, an oily look to it, rather than say sand or dirt as Acrax Earth Shade. On the final touch, I'm going to use some Stormhost Silver, just a lightly dry brush over some of our metalled areas, create a mottled and weathered effect. Get that paint in the bristles, wipe away the excess. I've always been into like fantasy and sci-fi and art as well. I've always been something of a novice artist. But I like how Warhammer is quite, I would say it's quite a therapeutic little hobby. But also like the world building, the books that they have released and all the little bits of lore and the rule books and stuff, it's absolutely phenomenal. And it's so engaging, like the setting of Warhammer itself, it's not so much a story, it's, um, it's a setting. And that's like the best part of it. And you can kind of make up your own stories if you like. And base your faction around kind of a story that you come up with. Now, just because I'm feeling lucky, I'm going to use some Wild Rider Red. I'm going to see if we can pin on some pupils for our blood letters. Very easy process, but very finicky. Uh, 
and there we have it one skull cannon of corn um, thank you for watching and hopefully you've taken something away from this video either techniques or law thank you